been heard, has his own like CTV comedy now special, has been heard on The Debaters, traveled internationally with his stand-up, so um, it's, you've been like a coveted person, I've wanted uh, you on the show actually for a while. And then I asked, he said yes, and it was so easy. So I'm very thrilled to welcome, uh, give it up for Dylan Reimer. <laughs> Hey, uh, how, about, how about everybody's been on so far? And Sarah, come on. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit out of my element because I, I usually do stand up, and uh, uh, Sarah contacted me to do this, and I'd heard about it, and I thought it was an amazing idea. And also, I have this book, which I've been wanting to share with people. Um, and my contribution is not smutty at all. Um, I know. Uh, it does, however, um, I am going to mock religion mercilessly for the next ten minutes or so. This is a book, uh, a real book by the name of If God Loves Me, Why Can't I Get My Locker Open? By, by Lorraine Peterson. And, uh, yeah, say what? Totally. <laughs> In a, my last name is Reimer. Uh, I grew up in a, a traditionally a Mennonite family, um, and this is the result. Drunk on the internet. Anyways, uh, and I used to get books like this. So, so Christmas and birthdays always sucked shit because if it was from any of my relatives, would, like when they found out I was a comic, they, uh, my grandparents, uh, you know, God bless them, quote unquote. So like, oh, Dylan likes comedy. Let's send him a bunch of Christian Archie comics. Which, if you haven't had a chance to read a Christian Archie, oh, it's God. like Archie without the humor, yeah. uh, or, with, or any of the like the sexual, you know, the fucking like the sexual tension that drives Archie, but it, instead it's hold hand, uh, like hand holding. Like, oh, who's he gonna, who's he gonna marry in twenty years? Is it gonna be the like night of the blood? The past five years. What's that? You mean like Archie from the past five years? I don't. <laughs> Did a grown-up just mention Archie from the past five years? Are they, they, so they've they, they, they got the internet now on Archie. Anyways. Anyways, it's God, if God loves me, uh, why can't I get my locker open? Devotionals for teens. And, and on the, uh, by the way, uh, Steve, I think you can agree. There's nothing that uh, an adolescent human being appreciates more than being called a teen. It's not remotely patronizing. They're not human beings, they're teens! Like, if you see the word teen, it definitely sucks. Uh, and there's, there, if you can see on the cover, it's a troubled young person, you know, sitting in front of their locker, thinking about shooting up the cafeteria. <laughs> uh, it says over, over 500,000 sold, and two red, I think. Uh, <laughs> Me and the proofreader, I think. I think I was the second person. This thing still had fucking dust on it, but anyways, this wasn't given to me by my... This was actually given to me by my relatives when I was a teen, and then I immediately threw it in the garbage, and then this was re-given to me by a friend who thought I would find it hilarious about a month ago. So, uh, Louisa, if you're watching, I'm using it, and it's getting laughs. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and here, uh, it, it's got a little, uh, um, I guess a little uh, dedication from the people who uh, bought it. Dear Nicole, we hope that you enjoyed this book. God bless you. Love, Uncle Ted and Auntie Pat. Aww. I know. And uh, Uncle Ted and Auntie Pat, she hates the fucking book. That's why, that's, that's why I own it. Uh, so, if God loves me, why can't I get my lo uh, locker open? Or how to be an even more irritating Christian teenager. Or practical notes on remaining a virgin for two thirds of your natural life. <laughs> Or maybe you can't get your locker open because you forgot the fucking combination. I mean, supernatural entities don't have anything to do with it. Self-centered bitch. Anyways, I, I don't have to, I don't have time to read all the chapters, obviously. But some of the names are great. Like uh, one is called uh, on chapter uh, page twenty-eight. It's, uh, the chapter is called "But Don't Look in the Closet." That's... Page page thirty-eight. Your best friend Jesus. Uh, page 43, I am weak, but he is strong. The creepiest one, page 51, do you enjoy being kidnapped? I'm actually going to read that one. <laughs> page 62, whose slave are you? Going to read from that as well. Uh, page 75, quit sinning and start winning. <laughs> yeah, 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 like Anthony Robbins. Uh, 
Because Jesus can't compete with Tony Robbins. Come on. There's Jesus. Uh, 133, Jesus, the heart dealer. Yeah, that's stupid. And then uh, we're going to finish off with uh, page 151. Oh, what a beautiful tongue you have. I know, man. I know. So, uh, page 16. Uh, because it's, it disintegrates into just boring uh, uh, like Bible verses and whatnot, I've just highlighted the best bits. So that's what we're going to focus on. So uh, page 16, what are my choices? That's the title. What are my choices? And I've only highlighted one line, just so you get an idea of the mindset of the person who wrote this and how this person, how Lorraine, how Lorraine Peterson wants everyone to think. Uh, she's written, when you're deciding what to do with your life, the possibilities at first seem limitless. There are hundreds of occupations to choose from, and probably thousands of people you could marry. Like, that's it. Get a job, get married. <laughs> Anyways. And the next one is, uh, window shopping, or really searching. Window shopping, or really searching. And this is, okay, here we go. A guy named Skip loved animals and had a special interest in a pet monkey which was for sale in a local pet shop. When he went to see the monkey, no, sorry, he went to see the monkey often and enjoyed playing with it. He even dreamed about the monkey at night. Clerk, clerks who saw how much he liked the monkey kept hoping for a sale, but they always received the answer, I don't make a lot of money. If I bought a monkey, I'd have to move. My neighbors think a monkey is a weird pet. Besides, I enjoy just coming here to see him because I get the benefit of enjoying him without the responsibility of caring for him and buying his food, end quote. <laughs> Skip was a confirmed window shopper. He refused to get involved or make a firm decision. Skip couldn't honestly say, I went shopping today for a pet monkey, but I couldn't find one. <laughs> who, who can really honestly say that? She's shitting on Skip for being a responsible human being. That's like, would you rather fucking Skip? It's like, monkey! I want monkey! And then took it home and then like, it, you know, winds up in the garbage bag. And like, somewhere like, you probably shouldn't impulse buy a monkey. You probably should show up 10 or 12 times. And, and what kind of pet shop sells a monkey? The one from Outbreak. That's the one. And, 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 so what happens. and, the, and the guys... I love, I love the clerks, like, today's the day, he's like, that fucking Skip, I tell you, today's the day he's gonna buy a guy, that goddamn monkey. You're crazy, Skip, he's giving you monkey blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the next one, we skip forward to page 51. The headline is, do you enjoy being kidnapped? Uh, my answer is no, which is why I'm an atheist. I don't, uh, I don't enjoy being kidnapped, so I don't believe in God. Um, not long ago, the newspapers, the newspapers, by the way, not anyone in particular, the, the, you know, the, the newspapers, <laughs> carried the story of a wealthy Italian girl who was kidnapped. Her parents came up with the ransom money only to find that she liked living with her kidnapper. She refused to be free. Do you enjoy your sin? Do you find... Yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that, is that a rhetorical question? Do you enjoy your sin? Do you find self-pity comforting? Do you appreciate the way your temper helps you get your own way? And, and, and tell me this next line is not about masturbation. Do you find that dwelling on unclean thoughts is an enjoyable pastime? <laughs> okay, when I was a teenager, all mad because I couldn't get my locker door open. Uh, yeah, unclean thoughts all day long. I, I, I drilled on them six, seven times a day. I, I kind of miss it, actually. <laughs> I thought I was masturbating, it turns out I just had Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> oh yeah, and then this, okay, you might not be able to see this. Uh, I'll show it to the internet first. This drawing has absolutely nothing to do with anything in the book at all. Now, can you guys see this? Are you focusing on it there? Yeah. Okay, it's a drawing of a fucking wolf in a chair with a, like, a, like a chef hat and a big full belly picking his teeth. Now, I've read three pages before and three pages after this drawing, and nothing is even remotely... It has nothing to do with anything. It's just the creepiest... You're like, oh yeah, right, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't have unclean... Th oh, wolf! I hope I don't get eaten by a wolf who wears a hat. And you're like, oh, so what, what about that fucking wolf? Oh, nowhere. No. What's a metaphor? Why? No, yeah, maybe. 
Or is it a simile? It's a visual metaphor. I think it's a simile, though. It's not oh, masturbation is a wolf that will devour you for the rest of your life <laughs> until your hands fall off. Or is it masturbation is like a wolf that will. <laughs> but there's no. It's an allegory. I, I don't even. I, I wish I, I wish. I know I, I seem so smug and, and, and smart up here, but I, I couldn't tell you what an allegory actually is. It's a parable. How about that? It's a parable. <laughs> Okay, so, moving right along. Uh, okay, so here's, uh, um, they don't name the chapters, it's just, uh, and they've actually stopped, okay, 60, page 62. Whose slave are you? Yeah, okay, I love this line. Watching Roots on TV or studying U.S. history can make you hate slavery. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, for those of you who don't, you guys guys know Roots, right? It was like this like incredibly depressing uh, miniseries from the mid '80s. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I hate slavery is because I saw Roots. <laughs> Thank God I saw it, or I'd be in the clan right now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> watching Roots on TV or studying U.S. history could make you hate slavery. In fact, maybe you couldn't imagine anything worse than being a slave. But did you know that millions of people are slaves today? Their master is sin, and sin is a terrible master. Oh I know. Like, like, yeah, kind of. No, not even say what the fuck. I think is. The <laughs> and then it just gets downright creepy because because uh, Lorraine, uh, I always forget her name, and I should. Uh, goes on to rec recount a tale. I remember an object lesson I saw as a child. A visiting pastor. Okay, right, right away, that's bad. A visiting pastor. I don't like this going. Anyways, a visiting pastor picked out one boy from the audience and tied the boy's arms together with a strand of thread. <laughs> it was easy for the boy to break the thread. Winding the thread around three times made it a little harder to break. Finally, so many threads bound the boy's arms together that he could do nothing. Sin, the pastor explained to us, is like that thread. It looks so harmless at first, but it takes away your freedom and makes you look like a prisoner. If you know an alcoholic, a drug addict, or a very bitter person, my ears are burning, you have seen this principle at work. The only way to break away from sin is to get a new master. Note, at no point is not being a fucking slave even addressed, right? Like, that's not one of the options. It's like, it's like Jesus, like, yeah, yeah, it's like, a, it's like Jesus like a pimp. Like, oh, yeah, fuck that Satan guy, I'm a fucking better fucking pimp. Come on over, right? Like, the idea of not being a slave doesn't even enter into the conversation. And furthermore, priests tying up a child's hands with threads, like, maybe the priest was finding out how much thread it would take to tie up a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it! Hey, that's my line. <laughs> I, I got the gay things backwards, by the way, earlier. <laughs> so when you were supposed to say, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, snap. Oh, snap. I thought that was bad. I was all like, fucking... Yeah, oh, snap! <laughs> so I was sitting there disagreeing with everybody like a drunk <laughs> Okay, just a couple more here. All right, so, the page 83. And this one I love. But you could fly. That's the name of it. But you could fly. The Bible talks about two kinds of life. The life of the spirit and the life of the flesh. Natural life. We are living in a world where the things around us are running according to natural life. The life of the flesh. In case you didn't get it from the previous <laughs> sentence. Um, it's a world in which people are expected to stomp on others to get to the top. To tell lies when a lot is at stake. And to boast about how great they are. <laughs> Is that what they think about the secular world? Ah, oh, help stomp to get there. My stomp to get low. Um, that's all I do as, a, as an atheist. I just, I'll see a homeless guy or a small child. Fuck you! Ah, I don't believe in God. It's okay to stomp people. But when you become a Christian and start reading the Bible, you learn about selflessness, truths, uh, truth, and humility. Uh, and if you keep reading the Bible, you, you'll also learn about incest, um, genocide, and homophobia. But, you know, I think that's not one part of the Bible that you actually read. But, but hold on, we're talking about real science here. So she brings up algebra in, in, in an incredibly articulate way. <laughs> so Lorraine, Lorraine says, Whether I throw an algebra book, book out the window on the 87th floor, bracket, wouldn't you like to sometimes? In bracket. Or merely drop a pencil. Gravity will take over. That's a 
fucking manslaughter, isn't it? Like, <laughs> she, she could have just, I'm just gonna drop a book. Here, in a, a room safely, not with the fucking terminal velocity and a sharp pencil going through some bus driver's head and his family's sad. Yes, I, no, I haven't thought about Lorraine because I'm a rational human being. Um, anyways, she goes, looking up in the sky, you'll have to admit that neither birds nor airplanes seem to worry about the law of gravity. <laughs> Privately, because both, yeah, totally say what. Because they both lack the capacity for rational thought. It's a fucking airplane. And a bird. A bird's like, oh shit, I'm a bird. Ah, I'm doing this again. I'll freeze to death in the winter. I am not going south. <laughs> Or an airplane, seemingly an airplane. Uh, what do I care? I'm a fucking airplane. <laughs> like it doesn't. It's a piece of steel that I hate getting in. They fly, and this is, you know, they fly according to a higher law, which I still say, the law of physics. So, uh, for Newley's principle of lift kind of summed it up. Um, oh, yeah, and then, and then I love this. Uh, uh, if science fiction writers c concocted a power which enabled individuals to fly 300 miles per hour and land safely just by carrying a pocket-sized device. Readers would be amazed if this power were never used. We're pretty close, aren't we? The fucking cell phone check-in. Like, I can get on a plane and I go about 300 miles an hour. Okay, one more. And I'm gonna close on this and then we'll all have a nice, uh, nice break. Uh, and this one is titled, as promised, Oh, what a beautiful tongue you have. You all have beautiful tongues. But why have I never told you? People often comment on beautiful eyes, flawless complexion, and lovely smiles, but no one ever says, Oh, what a beautiful tongue you have! <laughs> Yet that would be the nicest compliment you could ever receive. By the way, I tell my wife that every fucking day. <laughs> Not at our, at our wedding, this photo. Ah, yeah, I love your tongue. I'm marrying your tongue. Your tongue, <laughs> your tongue can make a big difference in the atmosphere and make life easier for a lot of people. <laughs> your tongue, your tongue more than any other part of your body can make you a person worth knowing. <laughs> One who brings comfort and cheerfulness wherever he goes. That's right, they use he. If you're going with that blowjob thing, I don't know if you were, but I was. <laughs> So finally tonight, folks, in the immortal words of Lorraine Peterson, over 500,000 copies sold and read by two. <laughs> Stop concentrating solely on getting the world's best tan and getting your hair to go just right. Start praying that God will teach you to say just the right things. That's the first step towards having a beautiful tongue. And I want to say all of you people have the most beautiful tongues that I've ever seen in one room at the same time. So thank you, Sarah. Enjoy your trip. get another drink of the bathroom, but let me go first, because uh, I'm hosting the show. Um, so, five minutes, and we'll, we have three more fantastic readers with crazy books. Yay! Yay.